can quite see you there. Please, come in and make yourself comfortable. James, get in here! We have guests! Ah, welcome. Hi! Ah, welcome to Nerdsburg. Coming up on today's show... Oliver teaches us non-intellectuals about the wonderful world of retro gaming. Then we go to Dan with top 5 new releases. And finally, Ben, with the best video game soundtracks from 2014 onwards. Surprise! It's time for a new game. Oh, a new game. This game is developed by 4A Game. The franchise all started with Metro 2033 and Metro Last Fight. Now Metro Exodus has been created. This is the latest installment to the Metro series. It's got all sorts of content to be discovered. Like from mutant creatures like the Lurker, terrifying walls, all the way up to mutant colossal bears. I mean, look at this thing. The forest court comes first. The court will decide if we kill them. <laughs> Some of weapons you can use to defend against the, the haunted lands of Russia. You can also customize your weapons to suit your needs, thanks to your trusty backpack. And when I mean customize, I mean you can have things like suppressors, ACOG scopes for your sniper rifle, all sorts. You play as Altium in the vast nuclear wastelands of Russia. And in these vast lands, you have the opportunity to take choices that can turn to your favor or to your demise. <coughs> Artyom was born in Moscow just before the nuclear war had started and transformed everything to ruin. Time for some old games. Ah! Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to Retro Gaming. We're here to teach you of the games of the past and why someone such as yourself, looking quite beautiful today, might enjoy them. Now, what is classified as a retro game? What we've decided on is any game from the 1970s to the 1990s. For example, Super Mario Bros. or Banjo Kazooie. Anything from that time period. For today's article, we'll be talking about three video games one for the MS DOS, one for the Super Nintendo, and one for the PlayStation 1. We hope you stick around for them all. Get a load of this, silly Billy. The first game we'll be talking about today is Doom, released for a large number of consoles. Its software began development on Doom in November of 1992, releasing the game on the 10th of December 1993, with three episodes, the first, Knee Deep in the Dead, being free to the public as shareware. The other two episodes cost £30, which in all fairness, was worth the price considering how successful the game was. Doom's popularity became a huge problem to schools, universities, and even workplaces as it became a huge distraction to anyone who played the game, and employees at id Software weren't immune to Doom's effects either. Lead designer John Romero had spent a week locked in his office doing nothing but playing Doom. John Carmack, founder of id Software, took an axe to Romero's office door to get him to stop playing the game and to get some work done. The pieces of Romero's office door remained on the floor for weeks to serve as a reminder of what will happen to employees if gotten distracted by Doom. Today, if you asked anyone if they were more familiar with Microsoft Windows or Doom, the majority of people would most definitely reply with Microsoft Windows. In fact, Doom's popularity didn't go unnoticed. Bill Gates was so impressed by this that he considered trying to buy its software. However, the buyout never took place. Instead, Bill Gates wanted to make a Windows port of Doom, to which its software happily agreed to. And you'll never guess who worked on the Windows port of Doom. That's right, it was Lord Gaiman himself! Praise the Lord! Oh, praise the Lord! Right! How are you, Dean? Praise the Next we'll be covering a personal favorite of my JRPG known as Earthbound, also known as Mother 2 in Japan. It was released in 1994 and created by Japanese copywriter, SAS lyricist, game designer, and actor Shigesato Itoi as the sequel to his first game, Mother for the Nintendo Famicom. The game features a young boy with psychic abilities named Ness who must go on an adventure across the regions of Eagle Land, Hoggy Land, and Chomo in order to defeat the evil cosmic destroyer known as Gaius. 
Rather than using swords or bow steel damage, Earthbound uses yo-yos, frying pans, bottle rockets, and the previously mentioned psychic powers known as PSI, among other various things. The game also features a unique element with its rolling HP counter in which when hit with an attack, your HP will slowly roll down instead of being immediately set. This means if you're hit with a move that would ordinarily kill you, if you heal or finish the battle before the counter hits zero, the counter will stop and you will be completely fine. Though Earthbound is considered an obscure game by many, those who play it often find themselves falling in love with the franchise, as despite the series' 13 year absence, the Earthbound community is still strong to this day, with many creators even taking influence from it and creating their own games, such as Lisa and Undertale. Close change. Don't worry about that. It's Gucci. And finally, we have Twisted Metal. Released in 1995, Twisted Metal is a game made by Singletech, which was sadly closed in 2000, and published by Sony for the PlayStation and PC. The game is about clowns competing against each other in order to win a tournament called Twisted Metal, run by a man named Calypso in order to win the prize of anything they want, without limit. Twisted Metal is focused on the fast-paced action within the gameplay rather than story. You can tell it's more from multiplayer with the wide variety of cars, characters, playstyles, and maps. The game also takes place on Christmas Eve. That has been it for the Retro School. Hope you all enjoyed. If you didn't, then it's real. Ch we need some music. Red Dead Redemption 2 was the official winner of the best soundtracks from the Game Awards 2018. The soundtrack is compiled by Woody Jackson, who produces and designs many different musical scores. The game is an action-adventure western game created by Rockstar Games, and in the game, you play as a gang member from the vendor who are forced to flee from a robbery gone bad. You must fight, rob, and steal your way around the Americas in order to survive. Red Dead Redemption 2 is presented both through third-person and first-person perspectives. In the gameplay, the uh, elements include shootouts, heists, horseback riding, hunting, and maintaining the character's honor system during the game. This is done through moral choices and deeds that just come on There was an online multiplayer released for Red Dead 2 called Red Dead Online. This was released as a beta version in November, so it was still in development. The game broke several records and had the biggest launch in entertainment in this game. And that concludes this episode of Nerd Speak. We hope you found it insightful. Hope you enjoyed. And that will be a goodbye from us, and we hope to see you next time.